the Tom Likas Show. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to run away with my dad. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes, anything at all. At 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Here's Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? It's going okay. I, I'm driving in my car, so I, I'm sorry if it's a little bit uh, scratchy. But nonetheless, I'm calling you because I've been dating this girl. First of all, I'd like to say I'm 42 years old. I've never been married. I'm very happy about that. Since I was a kid, my dad told me, whatever you do, don't even think about getting married until you're 40. I'm 42, and I'm still not thinking about it. Good for and, you. Yeah, listen to your show. It just uh, reaffirms my belief that there's no need for it. I'm so stoked. It's great. I urge all your listeners that if you're even thinking about it, don't do it. Move on. <laughs> Anyhow, what I'm calling you about was I've been dating this girl for about four and a half years, and she's in a head case, and... Uh, Basically, uh, all I wanted in the, re- the uh, relationship was honesty. We can have an open relationship, I told her many times, just don't mess with my head. And, she, of course, she's been doing that. I ignored red flags because the sex was great, I have to admit. But I got sick and tired of being messed with. And one evening, I had suspected for a while she had uh, an account on an adult website. So I had been uh, skipping through it, and I found a photograph and an ad that, 99.9% was telling me it was her, you know? So, uh, I photographed again. Wait a minute, you're, you're fading out. I don't want to lose your story. When you say an adult website, are you saying a pornography website? Ah, we lost him. That sounded like a good story. Hopefully he'll call back and tell it. Damn. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jose on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jose. Uh, first time, long time. Thank you. Okay, I just have a quick question for you. Um, uh, basically, uh, what I wanted to ask was, uh, I have a, a distant cousin. Basically, she's my third cousin, and I know that um, that I ha- that I can hook up with her. Now, my question is, uh, what do you think about that, or how do you feel about that? Well, I mean, it all depends on how often you're likely to see this person. Uh, if things don't work out or, you know, what will be the repercussions if you tell her one day I've had enough? Um, none, because it's kind of, it's, it's long distance. I live in SoCal. She lives in, Nor- in, 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 uh, in, in Northern Cal. And so, like, we only see each other every once in a while, like during, like, family functions and stuff like that. Right. Well, uh, third cousin is legal, uh, so that's not a problem. And so if it isn't going to cause any problems in your family and you're not going to have to see her all the time. No, no. Uh-uh. But but I would use a condom. Oh, no, of course, of course. Dude, she's hot, man. Uh-huh. So it's like, yeah, so the last time I saw her, I would say maybe uh, about three years ago now, maybe four. Uh-huh. And. Yeah, so we we came close, but we decided not to because it you know it was a little awkward you know family being there and all you know. Can she keep her mouth shut? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't have a problem with it. You have no problem. All not right, the third I'm cousin. I don't know. <laughs> all right, Tom. That's what I needed, man. Can you take me out, um, uh, Bill O'Reilly style? Bill O'Reilly style, of course. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. Well, no. We'll do it live. F- it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. F-ing thing sucks. This is Tim on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Doing great. All right. So I uh, recently just walked out on my job. What I, kind uh, of job? Wait. What kind of job was it? A uh, loss prevention agent. You know, busting shoplifters. Right. And um, I just—they're they, sending me. You know, I live in the valley. And uh, they're sending me out to like South LA, Inglewood, and I'm a five foot six white, you know, white guy, you know, 120 pounds, and I just didn't feel safe. But you know, I don't, I don't know if does that make me a, a pussy? <laughs> Not necessarily. I mean, uh, you know, I guess it depends. Uh, people take risks according to how well they are compensated. 
Mm-hmm. So maybe you weren't being paid enough to have the courage it took. Yeah. You well, might be I mean, braver. You might be braver if they offered you twice the money. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. The re- one of the reasons that I quit was, you know, I was doing a lot of like acting stuff, a lot of a lot of extra work, and you know, it pays it pays double than what I was making, you know, doing doing this loss prevention. But the reason I got this loss prevention job was, you know, I was afraid that the actors were going to strike. And now, now that I heard that they're not going to, you know, I, it kind of gave me, you know, more reason to quit. Well, uh, do keep in mind, do factor in the fact that we're in the worst economic crisis of our lifetime. I know. So getting a day job may not be so easy. Yeah, I know. That, that was another thing. That's why I'm like, oh, you know, crap. Should I have, should I have done that? Should I have quit like that? Because I just walked out. I mean, I, I, I called the supervisor and I told him. You know, this is, I'm done. This is it. It's just because I was I was only making ten dollars an hour. Well, know, a ten dollar an hour job. There's plenty of those around even now. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, by the way, why aren't you in college, Tim? Um, I tried it twice and just couldn't do it. You're lazy. I, yeah, I'm. I'm pretty lazy. I had a, I you know I had a really easy senior year of high school. So I, uh, I think that. Do you kinda... understand that extra work in movies is not a career? Oh, definitely. I, I was tired of doing that, but it's just, it's just easy money. And yeah, but while... but but then what? You know, again, you keep, can't keep taking jobs that are easy money. At some point, you have to decide on a career, and frankly, to have a career, you have to go to school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I yeah, but you different. won't do it. I know. Uh, I, I want to. Like, I really want to, but I just now forget you know, about I... wanting to. Look at how bad things are now. They say the unemployment rate could hit 10% this year. Uh, well, what is it right now? Like three? No, no, no. Now it's over 7%. And in California, it's over 8%. Uh, well, you know. You, you need school. You need I it. Know. I know. I totally do. But We don't like going to the dentist for a cleaning. We don't like going for a colonoscopy. And we don't like working, but you know what? You have to do some work. Mm-hmm. You're 19. You are too young to just throw in the towel, and that's what you're doing. Yeah, I know. I just, you know, I don't, I'm still kind of like, I just, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> you know? And I, well, I you're going to have to get over it, son, because uh, how are you going to support yourself? I know. And, you know, eventually one day I want to have a family, not for a while. But, you know, and you still live at home with mommy and daddy, and they're paying the bills, right? Actually, no, I, I, I don't live at home. But um, how much? Wait, wait, who do you live with? I live with my cousin. Yeah, I knew you weren't paying the bills yourself. No, actually, well, I mean, I still pay rent, but I mean, it's not. It's yeah, not what do you much. pay? Three hundred dollars a month? Exactly. How do you know? There we go, son. There are no apartments that uh, that uh, have three hundred dollar a month rents attached to them. I know. You need to get real about what's out here. Do you understand that? Yeah, oh, totally. That means you got to do something about it. I'm going. I'm going to do something about it, Tom. Somehow I doubt it. Well, can you uh, take me out with a bong hit? Because that's probably what I'm about to do right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I could have guessed that. Here you go. It's Erica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I was just wondering why are you giving men advice on not getting married, not being in a relationship, and not having families, and you're messing up their lives? No, I'm messing up your life. I'm not messing up their lives. I'm, I'm helping their lives. I'm helping protect their wealth. I'm helping them make more money. I'm helping them be more secure. And, and I'm making it harder for people like you to take what they earn and give it to yourself. Okay, I I can see where you're going with that, but where do you get your information from? What makes you an expert on what you say? Because I think it's a total bunch of crap. Well, if you and, rather than asking me my credentials, why don't you tell me what I'm wrong about? I'm listening. Well, I think it's very important your credentials because you're on the air. Get, have men listen again? To you why don't you tell us what it is that I, that I'm wrong about? I'd like to hear it. I I think you're wrong about telling men that a a forty dollar rule on a date. Why is that? Why is that wrong? Wait, 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 wait. Let's take one item at a time. Why is that wrong? 
why is that wrong, a $40 yeah. date? Yeah. The reason why I feel that is wrong is because um, you're setting limits. You're setting limits on these yes, young men on what they should do there and what should they should be not limits. do. And there it, should should be not, limits. it should not be limits. Men should be able to do what they want to. And when no, they call no, men no, you, no, you no, like no, 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 no. Men should not be able to do what they want to. Men yes, should they set can. limits. Men. Men. Well, they are doing what they want to. They're setting well, limits they for themselves. But you're giving, you're giving advice. You're giving, you know, right. don't get married. Right. Um, you know, I think that's a bunch of crap. It's, it's well really known. It is a crap. fact. Like this is a fact. A fact. It is a fact. It is a fact. That when uh, two people divorce, a man's standard of living increases, and a woman's standard of living decreases. Why do you okay, think that the, is? Give me, give me where you get your information from. Where can uh, I find that? Because I think that you're just shooting out stuff just because that's how you if feel. You, if you Google that you're phrase, not, I mean, you're just, again, if you Google that phrase, uh, you will see it online in countless locations by credible people. Uh, after divorce, a man's standard of living increases. And a woman's standard of living decreases. Among the people who say that all the time are the top divorce attorneys in America who complain that women don't get enough in divorce and they complain that men get a better deal than women. It's said okay, all so the you time. Know that they will be better off with this, just their income instead of having two incomes in their household. You think that right. they're standard right. of living right because will be it, better. because and women spend because generally I always thought that two incomes I, again you and your big mouth. I'm not going to let you talk over me. So uh, since I have control, I'll just continue to control the conversation. Uh, the fact is that in most cases, uh, women spend more than they make, and men make up the difference. That is why a woman's standard of living decreases after a divorce, and a man's standard of living increases. Because he's not paying the marital tax. He's not paying uh, to uh, accommodate a woman's spending habits. Okay, so what? What? how is that? Okay, so a woman, what does she work for? She's making just as much money as he can. He is. She's bringing just as much to the table. Uh, generally, women, uh, generally, women who bring just as much to the table as a man, generally they are unattractive, fat, or older than the man that uh, they're supporting. That's not necessarily true because I'm not either Generally, one. they are. No, that's. Do you know I mean, what the word generally, generally means? So when a man this goes is not the Erica show, attention. darling. This is a show where we're broadcasting to a large and diverse audience. Uh, this is not a show about you. You may be one of the exceptions to the rule. That does not disprove the rule. But generally speaking, you don't say, "Hey, it's maybe some exceptions to the rule." I, 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 I just don't said it. I just acknowledge it. I just say it, but I don't really care. The fact that there are exceptions to the rule doesn't mean you should go pursuing, uh, trying to find one of those rare exceptions. Okay, so I don't think that you should just give them definite information when that's I'm giving them definite. You stay date. away. You can date. You can have sex. Uh, if you insist, you can even have children. But don't marry a woman because you will have to pay. Divorce courts screw men over. I've been divorced four times. That's my expertise. I know how it works. Okay, so you've been divorced four times. So that I mean, have you ever thought that maybe you were the problem? And like I said, it doesn't matter. I don't care who the problem is. I have solved the problem by not. Get, I have solved the problem by not getting married anymore. And now I am richer and more secure than I've ever been in my entire life. And by the way, happier. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you for calling. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Now Chris was about to tell us this great story about an adult website, uh, and we're going to find out how he burned his now ex girlfriend. Coming up. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show with shorter commercial breaks. Are you paying attention? Shorter commercial breaks, fewer commercials. And more phone calls from morons like you at 1-800-5800-TOM. Now, Chris uh, started telling a story earlier and that his cell phone gave out on him. He was telling a story about a girlfriend who he suspected was on what he called an adult website. Now, I was trying to find out. Uh, was it an adult website? Was that a porn site? What, what do you mean by an adult website? Uh, just uh, a website where adults advertise for uh, sex. So it's like Adult Friend Finder or something like exactly, that? Exactly. That's what it was. Okay. All right. So adult friend finds like match.com for perverts. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you suspected she was on there and you saw a profile on there? Exactly. And that, the that sounded an awful lot like her? Exactly. There were no photos? No, that was a photograph. Absolutely. And it was her? It was her. 
Wow. And I, conf- I confronted her with it, and she, of course, denied it, you know, uh, kept denying it. And I just, I, was, I knew I wasn't going crazy. And in the past, I had uh, suspected this going on, and she's had, uh, you know, guys call her, and uh, she completely lied about it, swore on her children's lives that it wasn't some dude, but I did find out it was, you know. So, and I was cool with the open relationship thing. I told her many times, but I said, please, whatever you do, don't lie to me because that's not cool, messing with people's minds. Hello? So uh, did she finally cop to it? No, she didn't. So uh, she kept denying it. So I had an idea. I figured I could uh, uh, text message the photograph to her ex-husband who just lives down the street from her. And if it's not her, nothing would happen, of course. You ignore it just like it was spam on the telephone. So I did that. And uh, within a week, she called me up freaking out, saying that I uh, destroyed the relationship with her family. And I questioned her. I said, well, if it's not you, first of all, why would he even bother calling you? And, uh, you know, what's going on? Now, was this a, wait, 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 wait. Was this a naked picture? Oh, yeah. Oh, you left that part out. Advertising for sex with uh, couples, groups, whatever. Right. So so the pic, she had a picture of herself in her profile, a naked picture of herself that she denied was her. So you sent it to her ex-husband? Yes. And he responded. Over the phone. Right. And he, of course, he contacted her, and she said, all hell broke loose. And I said, of course, well, why should it if it's not you? I don't get it. So what did she say? Uh, she said she couldn't talk. And, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, you know, so anyhow, I was just, I, I had ignored all the red flags. I, uh, am grateful that, uh, it was, you know, I knew it was just a sexual relationship from the beginning and I'm cool with that. And I'm cool with open relationships. You have to be honest because it's not fair to mess with people's minds. And that's exactly what she was doing to me, looking me straight in the eye and lying and saying I was crazy, you know? And that, that's when I, every time I discovered in the past, truth, uh, you know, it was, that was it. It was just swept under the rug by her, you know? And I just said, hell, I'll stick around, you know, the sex is great. But I said, please don't screw with my mind. And uh, this was the final straw when I saw this. I said, my God, you know, how, you know, how can you do this to me? It's not cool. I don't mind if you do it if you're honest. So, so anyhow. that was it? That was it. So uh, I'm just really upset. And I figured that she was probably hooking using this website. You know, it makes a little extra cash on the side. Really? Well, don't you know, I don't know, but I... I just had been ignoring red flags for, you know, the last four years, and uh, I just got tired of it. So I'm not quite sure. She has she won't talk to me anymore. And uh, I sent her a message saying, if it's not you, it's no big deal what's going on. And uh, needless to say, I just got rid of a slut that was a liar. I like sluts, don't get me wrong, but I hate liars. By the way, how did you get her ex-husband's phone number? Uh, I, I've dated her four and a half years. He calls her all the time regarding her children. Maybe you want to call him one day. I thought about that. But I don't you know, know what's what? going I say, on. You know, I, I'd be interested to hear. Oh, here's the cool thing about this. When this guy, uh, he was smart enough. When he, uh, they got divorced, uh, prior to their divorce, he had placed their house in their, his parents' name to get a better mortgage rate, he said. So when all the stuff went down between him and her, infidelities whatsoever, uh, when, she got, when she left, he kept the house. So he was smart enough to do that. I suggest anyone that is uh, in now, a just imagine, marriage. think think like a guy for a second, which you are and I am. What if this guy uh, is having custody issues or visitation issues, and he could show the judge uh, the mother of the children advertising an adult friend finder? Right. Well, I'm sure you know. I, I you could him... be very helpful to him. Right. Well, I sent him the uh, the photo and the uh, her handle that she used. Uh, you know, instead of her name, of course, and the website. So, from oh, there, so he, he has uh, the link. Oh, great! Right. But I'm just, tired. I'm just tired of people, just liars, you know. They'll look you straight in the face and lie. And I told her, I am cool with whatever you do. Uh, you don't need to lie to me. I'm a pretty liberal guy. And she just continued to do it and do it. And she felt that, uh, as far as she was concerned, it was okay. There was no problem, you know. And that's just unfortunate. No doubt about it. Hey, uh, Chris, that was a good story. Thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Lisette on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I'm a long-time caller, long-time listener. My dad introduced me to you when I was about eight years old. 
So I've been listening to you for quite some time now. Wow, I love that. Um, yeah, I used to argue with you when I was younger, but then I understood that you have a lot of good points to make. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> I was calling because my boyfriend and I had been talking about my uh, current financial situation. I make $30,000 a year at the job that I'm working at right now, but I'm also going to school part-time. I'm about four classes away from transferring to a university, and um, he recently took a job as a financial advisor, so he's practicing on me. And uh, he his suggestion to me was that because I am first-generation United States-born, I am a single mother um, at the age of 22. I also... Um, um, Why did you do that? American. Oh, um, that was a complete accident. <laughs> no, no, darling. Um, not using birth control is not an accident. Oh, no, I was on birth control. And it wasn't working? It, it apparently did not work. So Don't say condoms. Switched, yeah, well, yeah, that was my stupid self there. Not you were not on birth He was on birth control, but you weren't. No, I was on birth control. He was not. What were you using? I was on the pill. Didn't work? It did not work. And then I found out from both of my sisters it didn't work for them either. No. To which I was like, oh, it would have been nice if you could have let me know that that ran in the family. It would have used something different. Exactly. But I still should have been a little bit smarter and forced him to wear a condom. And I didn't. And now I have a two-year-old. So, um, yeah, loads of fun there. <laughs> um but I'm also Native American, so he's saying that I can qualify for a lot of government student loans as well as a lot of scholarships because of those primary qualifications. So he thinks that I should quit my job, attend school full-time, I'll get through my schooling a lot faster, and I can jump into my career. And then he said with the student loans, he thinks that there's a way that because I'm becoming a teacher that um, the government should forgive my student loans. He says it's actually really common for that to happen. Who I'm, said this? Wait, who my said boyfriend. This? My boyfriend did. Well, is your boyfriend an attorney? No, he's a um, he's currently he... a financial advisor, and really? he he used to he was looking into being a teacher about a year and a half ago um, because he was in real estate before that. So when the real estate industry crashed, he started looking at his other options, and he has a degree in English. So he was looking into being an English teacher and found out through whatever link he found that he doesn't know where it is anymore, that oftentimes a, uh, if you work for the LAUSD for, I think he said, two years, they'll forgive your student loans. Well, uh, I'm always nervous about the idea of expecting people to forgive loans yeah, because I'm worried about the impact on my credit rating. So yeah. something like that, as much as he's your boyfriend and you say he's a financial advisor, I'd run that past an attorney. Okay. All right. That sounds actually like a really good idea. I never you even know, thought to run that past an attorney. I would, and, and an accountant for that matter, or a tax attorney, to see if uh, that's true or not true, because you don't want to be in a position where they forgive your loans and then you find out that you've got a lousy FICO score. As far as going to school, instead of working, if there was ever a good time... Uh, to make a decision like that, it's now. With the uh, economy as lousy as it is and uh, employment as low as it is, unemployment as high as it is, this is a good time to be getting that schooling. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still going to school. I'm going part-time, though. But, right. you know, my biggest concern is because of the economic status of the way that it is right now, if I were to get a student loan or a government scholarship, what if they were to yank that out from under me? Right. And then I would lose all of my financial backing without a daytime job to support me. Right. So that's why I'm so hesitant. And he's just like, oh, no, do it. Go for it. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, what do you mean don't worry about it? Uh, anytime I hear that phrase, don't worry about it, uh, whatever it is I'm not worrying about, I start worrying about it at that point. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-86. The Tom Likas Show. the Tom Likas Show. Don't forget our Saturday show tomorrow from 2 until 6 p.m. Do I have to beat you over the head? We're now on six days a week. Saturday, 2 to 6 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk. And uh, if you don't live in SoCal and you can't hear the Saturday show, go to our website, blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button tomorrow between 2 and 6 p.m. We'll be on the radio. 
here for you. Monica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. Um, well, I need your help. Um, my story pretty much, I came to this country when I was 10 with my parents. And, you know, we came here legally as visitors. And as you know, after six months, that expires. And my parents decided to stay here. And I'm 22 now, and I'm still here. They actually try to apply for um, permanent residency three times, and they got denied all three times. Where are you from? Colombia. Colombia. Well, that's probably why. Mm -hmm. As you know, different countries get different treatment from the INS. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I think the view of Colombia is a little dated because uh, Colombia is a whole different country than it was 10, 15 years ago. But I still think it gets lumped in with countries that we consider troublemakers. Yes, um, pretty much. Um, I'm 22 now, and I'm, I just want to go to school and finish school, but I'm not able to because I'm not able to apply for um, any type of you know, government financial help. Right. So, you know, like, and I'm already 22, and I feel like the years, I'm still here illegally, and I'm always scared that I'm going to get caught by somebody, you know? And have, you ever I don't had know a have you ever had a job or anything? Yeah, but I've worked little jobs that don't require much information and that they don't really do any type of background check. Right. And, I mean, I don't know if actually my parents went back to Colombia after 15 years of living here, and I just, I'm just really... I don't know what to do. Actually, my and, grandmother, and, you, and, and you really don't know Colombia. You know California. Exactly. I mean, I've grown here, you know, I've grown up here. I don't know anything else. And as much as I don't want to leave, I don't want to still live here living the way I do. And on top of that, let me guess, because I've known many people in your position, you can't leave the country because you'll never get back in. Exactly. Actually, if I leave the country, I'm not able to come back for 10 years. Right. So yes, I'm just stuck in this position that, you know, I'm just, I don't know what to do. Well, uh, you don't have a lot of options here, obviously. Now, the first thing I would do, of course, if you haven't done it already, is to talk to an immigration attorney about whether you have any options. Yeah, I mean, we actually did talk to an immigration attorney, and pretty much at this point, since we've already, you know, applied so many times for it, and they denied us, there's nothing else we can do. Right. And I just know whether, I mean, as far as... But that, here's my question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, that may apply to your parents, but uh, you're your own entity. You're not. Uh, you're now an adult. You're on your own. They don't live here. They're not applying with you. Does their apl application for uh, a green card or for permanent residence, uh, does that affect you? Yes, it does, because um, my parents applied, when they were applying for residency, they applied the whole family. Okay. And um, pretty much the only thing I can hope for is um, something called, actually, I can't remember right now, but it's for, you know, students that, children that came here under 18 and that um, have graduated, you know, high school here. And pretty much it wasn't my choice to come to this country. But, you know, our whole lives we've been here. So um, it's a bill that it's been proposed every year, but it hasn't gone through. So I just don't know if I should stay here and wait till that maybe possibly, if that might pass through um, our new president, or if I just, should just try to, like, go somewhere else. Actually, my grandmother's from Spain, so I might be able to try to get um, paperwork to go to Europe, but I don't know if that's a good choice for me. Well, uh, you know, Europe is having the same financial problems now mm -hmm. that we are. For a while, we were having problems that they weren't. Yeah. Uh, when, when you uh, have uh, citizenship in one country like Spain... Uh, you actually have a passport that allows you throughout the entire EU, you know, so that, uh, you know, that puts you into mm -hmm. Italy and France and plenty of places. But I'm guessing you've never even been to Europe. No, I haven't. You're right. Okay. So uh, it's a place you know nothing about. And even if you apply there, how are you going to get an education? How are you going to get a job? Um, these are all things to be considered. And by the way, that's something I would also talk about with an immigration attorney uh, who may have mm -hmm. connections or contacts uh, uh, in Spain or elsewhere. Now, so are you telling me your your um, uh, your grandmother is from Spain, you said? Yes. She passed away a long time ago, but my dad's trying to, um, you know, since she was born there, he's trying to and 
I think before. that might qualify you, uh, and I'm yeah. not an attorney, so remember, please consult an attorney, but I knew someone from Colombia um, who got an EU citizenship based on her father being from Spain, and her father had died. Yeah, I just think if I have, you know, if, um, if I have paperwork in Europe and I'm legal there, I'm going to be able to maybe, you know, ask the government, just like here, you know, for financial aid, and I can finish school and just... Right. You know, live in peace, <laughs> pretty much. Right, I understand. Well, that much I can't tell you. I, I don't know. I do know that uh, Europe, uh, on the one hand, is much more open about governmental services. It's much closer to, if not socialism, it's you know bigger government and trying to take care of people more than we do in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, by the same token, uh, many times they have a very hard time with people coming in from other countries. Uh, they just like their own countries. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, so you never know what you're going to run into. But, the, you know, you need to consult an attorney, uh, an immigration attorney, and you need to tell them that you know, this is one of the things you're considering. Now, obviously, the other possibility is if you were planning on getting married one day, that you will marry an American. <laughs> well, actually, we've asked um, about that option, and... Um, they told us that even then, I won't be able to, if I were to do that, I still won't be able to um, get my paperwork through that. Why not? Actually, because they've already denied us so many times. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, it's a tough situation, you know, and I well, don't know. I, now, here's the other question I would have. Um, maybe you can become a citizen of the EU. Mm-hmm. And then you're applying as a citizen of another country. Uh, maybe you can apply again at that point, almost like a different person. Yeah, actually, that's what I was hoping for. But, you know, I would have to live there, like I said, um, for 10 years and then hopefully, like I said, reapply. And if I, you know, really want to come back here in about 10 years. But, I mean, I guess that's pretty much my only choice. Right. Well, I the other like possibility is marry somebody so obscenely rich that you would never have to worry about going to work or telling people your social security number ever again. <laughs> yeah, that could work, I guess. <laughs> now, have you been dating rich guys? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I will. <laughs> but um, Yeah, but right. I, just, I just want to tell everybody that, you know, like people that are here just don't, you know, take advantage of what you have here. And I think a lot of my friends take it for granted. They have, you know, everything like all the financial aid in the world, and they're not even going to school, and I'm here, you know, like dying to, you know, do something with my life, and I'm not right. able to. I, so. I can understand how frustrating that must be. And again, I, I understand because I've known many people in your position, many. Yeah. L.A. is full of people like you. There's a lot of people out there listening to me right now who are citizens of some other country, uh, hoping they'll beat the right person or hoping they'll get the right combination of paperwork or, or just hoping nobody notices their existence. Mm -hmm. It's tough. I know somebody uh, not long ago, maybe in the past year or so, who, who married her best friend, a guy. Not, it's, not, it's not a real marriage. She might get caught, but she did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. No, I'm just, it's it's just really frustrating. I know. I know. Well, I think you have a good message for people there, Monica, and I can only hope people hear what you're saying. Tom Like It. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Like It. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Like It Show. You know when they have us doing radio programs, for God's sake, could be any any bunker, any fallout shelter, you know how it works. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Don't forget the Saturday edition of the Tom Likas Show, right here, tomorrow, 2 to 6 p.m., you'll be here, right? Oh, well, that's on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles, but also on our website, blowmeuptom.com, if you can't get the L.A. station. Go to blowmeuptom.com, log on, uh, click the, the uh, Listen Live button, and you'll be... Listen live. That's what you'll be doing. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And let's say hello here to uh, Edgar on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. That's good to hear, man. Actually, I was calling uh, a couple months ago before Obama got elected. Uh, 
you had a couple of callers calling in saying that if Obama got elected, that they would move out of the country. And I just really want to know if these douches really moved. Well, uh, obviously, if they did, you wouldn't be hearing from them. And if they didn't, you wouldn't be hearing from them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, I mean, mean, that's a very good question. Of course, you know, none of those morons left. They're all still here. Yeah, I, I figure, dude. I mean, they're not really going to move. There was no, one guy not. in particular that you were talking to that was saying he was going to move to Canada, and you, you were asking him a whole bunch of questions like, you know, who's running this, or the, I guess, Canada right now, and this guy didn't know a thing about it. Right. Yeah. That's he really didn't know the capital of Canada. He didn't know anything about Canada. Yeah. I just thought it was real funny. And, I mean, obviously they're not going to call because if they're still here, they're going to feel like real big douches. But uh, I just wanted to call and say that, man. Most of, them are real, well, most of them are real big douches. You know what I'm saying? Thanks a lot. <laughs> I appreciate the call. This is Pasha on the Tom Liker Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Okay. Oh, my God. I just started listening to you two weeks ago, and I love it. I cannot, like, stop listening to you. Thank you. Um, my question is, I got a roommate. Um, he's out of his girlfriend, but uh, lately she, like, she stays at the house, my apartment. Like, I kind of feel like she's moved in there, but not technically, but it's like, I want to know how I can bring it up to him, but, like, should I ask him for more rent or, like, well, you have to have Well, you have to have an upfront conversation about that stuff. Do you guys have an understanding or a rule about that? Um, there's no... Sorry, continue. I finished my sentence. Um, yeah, there was no rule. Like, he moved in four months ago, but, like, the last month, she stays there all the time. She sleeps there all the time. She's, like, she's using all the appliances. Oh. Uh, hey, 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 zero tolerance policy. You're out! The S word is not allowed on the air, you morons. Go to myspace.com slash Tom Likas, read my blog, and I have a list, which I wrote with my own hand, of all the filthy, vulgar words you can never say on the air that will hang up on you if you say them. That's myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Jose on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, how hey, you doing? Great. Hey, Tom, I got, I got some. Uh, what do you think about uh, this? Uh, she just had eight kids this week, and she's already got six more at home. I think, she, I think she's a loon. I think she's an absolute loon, and I think uh, she should be the lightning rod that makes us finally make some goddamn laws about how many kids people can have. Yeah, because I'm going to I have to say, out of my I for her say kids. if you apply for welfare, we figure out how many kids you cannot afford to uh, support, and then we start plucking them out one by one and giving them to deserving families until we finally get it down to a number you can afford. Yes, thank you. Tom, That's can my... you take me out, uh, Peterson and uh, Kurt Warner style? What was the first one? Uh, Lacey Peterson. Oh, Lacey Peterson and Kurt Warner style together. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Wow George on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tommy. How's it going, bud? It's going great, Georgie. Tom, got a question here, buddy. I got. Um, I was. I'm trying to think of going to school of broadcasting CSB, okay? And um, I went to the school. I checked it all out. You know, seems great. I wanted to. I wanted to go into the camera pro, camera uh, classes and stuff like that. So uh, video editing and um, and cameraman. So um, I wanted to get your advice in this tough times. What do you think? What's, what's going on in the, um, you know, in the broadcasting field? How, well, how put it this way. There's all kinds of broadcasting fields, and that one's one I know nothing about. I, I'm i in the talking part where yeah, I talk yeah, into I, a microphone. Um, I don't know. It appears there's all kinds of uses for people who know how to operate a camera and for video editing and what have you, not just on TV, uh -huh. but on the Internet. But uh, whether a school is the right way to go, I, I can't tell you because I really know nothing about it. Do you, but the, you know, what do you think about uh, business wise? Like the industry is it slow? Is it or is it good? Like I mean, I know it's which, not good. Well, which industry are we talking about? The TV industry. 
Well, the TV industry is like every other media industry right now. Anything that's supported by advertisers is shrinking, not growing at this point in time mm, cool, because cool, of the cool. economy. So you have to look at then, is there enough like action on Internet websites and things like that where they make videos? Is there cool. enough room for, um, for you if you got the training? And the answer is, I don't know. Um, I'm going to recommend you do something that my Aunt Rita recommended many years ago, and it worked very well for me. I recommend you contact a TV station and ask to speak to one of the photographers over there. Mm, that's Which a good idea. And, and, and ask him if you can buy him a beer or lunch, and then ask him if he can answer that question for you, because hey. that's who you need to be asking. Cool, cool. That's, your, that's a good idea, Tommy. Thanks a lot, but I appreciate the time. I love your show. Keep doing what you're doing, man. And give all, give all these morons some good advice, man. Appreciate it. Can you take me out with a bong grip, please? Yes, yes, George, I can. <sighs> yeah. Nick on the top, like his show. Hello. What's up, Tom? If you'd like to make a call, please hang up uh, and try again. Sorry, man. I smashed it with my shoulder. Hey, I wanted to say, uh, you know, all these businesses are going out of business stuff, bad economy. But it's weird. I've noticed that, like, in my area alone, I've noticed four new psychic reader centers, storefronts opening up, you know, where you get your hand read or something. That's because real estate prices are at a recent low. Oh, really? Is that really why? Of course. <laughs> It's Not funny, to mention like, the fact there's a bunch of maroons out there who are hoping if they go to the psychic, uh, they'll have some good luck. Yeah, at an uncertain time, they want a certain future, huh? From a psychic. <laughs> from, a, from a self-proclaimed psychic. Yeah, they didn't even go to school, huh? <laughs> psychic school. All right, well, uh, I'm running out of time here. Anyway, Nick, thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at... BlowMeUpTom.com. And don't forget, the Saturday edition of the Tom Likas Show, tomorrow from 2 to 6 p.m., I'm going to beat this into your head until you, uh, until you're bleeding. You know what I'm saying? Tomorrow, 2 to 6 p.m., be right here. The Tom Likas Show.